the public television family is pleased to welcome Bill Hageman, who is uh, CEO of Witham Smith and Brown, an accounting firm based where? Based in Princeton, New Jersey. And what's the footprint? Footprint is uh, Boston to Philly and down in uh, Florida. Otherwise known by one name, Witham. One by one name, Witham. I got I to ask you something. I'm going to give you a hard time. So I'm looking at this ad with our partners at NJ Biz. You got this, Bob? Take this. You can't, can, you, can you zoom in on this? Steve, Steve Barsi, our great cameraman. What is this guy? You see the sneakers? Now, I've been looking at this ad for a while, and you've got sneakers. The significance of the sneakers, you are the coach. That's part of the significance. They're um, light blue Chuck Taylor Converse. <laughs> I love it. That go with our new logo, our new brand, and we want to be the place where the cool kids want to work. So we're trying to appeal to the millennials. Well, let's talk about that. You know, creating an environment, a certain kind of environment, um, you're an accounting firm, but in many ways, as you and I have talked about leadership offline, you were just saying before you got in the air, you like to read, influenced by uh, Howard Schultz, who wrote yes. the creator of that little company, Starbucks. Starbucks yeah. They hit me up pretty hard every morning, right? I love it there. <laughs> you're a student of leadership. You're a student of organizational culture. Describe the culture you believe you've created at your company. We try to create a culture that is um, young, entrepreneurial, um, doesn't constrain people's ideas and thoughts and innovation. Um, we try to create a culture where the millennials are happy to work and they feel like they're gratified and they have an opportunity that will be long term. So let's talk about that. You know, as a student of leadership myself, I'm often fascinated by the question of motivating quote unquote millennials. Do you believe that? motivating and engaging millennials is any different that you're smiling as I'm asking the question, Bill, than say 10, 15, 20 years ago? I do. How so? Uh, the millennials have grown up in a different environment than you and I, <coughs> Go ahead. and even the Gen X folks. Um, and the millennials- what, no, Gen X is old school? That's correct. <laughs> so Gen X is old school. Go ahead. They don't necessarily relate to the millennials. This is great. You know, um, so the, the millennials like to give back to the community. They like opportunity. Um, they like to be challenged. So what, but they also are not loyal. They're not tied. So you got to try to build loyalty in them, loyalty to your organization. And so that, because if you think about a millennial, they can go online, put the resume online, and have five job offers within a weekend. So you need to be able to impress upon them that you've got an organization that's going to provide for all their needs and give them the opportunity so that they don't do that. How do you do that? Give us an example. You have this week of caring, right? With a week of caring is one of the ways we do because clearly millennials like to give back to the community. As a firm, and I've been with the firm since 1980, we've had a philosophy of giving back to the community. So what we try to do is formalize that. In 2011, we started with a week of caring. We give everybody in the firm an opportunity to spend four to eight hours a, during the week of Thanksgiving mm. to give to some kind of community organization. We have team building activities which organize them and we'll go to food banks, we'll go to ASPCAs, we'll go make breakfast at a homeless shelter, we'll go give away clothes we'll, at, a, at, a, at a women's shelter. You help our partners at the community food bank. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a very, in, in, in very important organization. Uh, down in the, uh, we also work down at the Monmouth County Food Bank. Sure. We do a lot of work there. Uh, we work Tim McClune's organization. It's a great organization. So all They're great organizations. Holidays, Holiday Express. Yes, They're Holiday Express. So we do all of that. Does it make them more, not make them, does it help folks to be more loyal and committed to the organization? I think they like to work for organizations that they feel have a community base and they feel are giving back to their community because it's very important to our staff to be able to do that. Okay, tie that to the bottom line, because you have to be very bottom line driven, and you are, connect the two. Our firm, compared to our peer group, um, has turnover that's less than half compared to the peer group. That generates bottom line dollars. It's not something you can quantify. Some people will say the cost of replacing an employee or staff person, as we call them, is, is, is fifty to $200,000. Pick a number, any number, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, doing things like with and Wiki Caring and other programs we have just make a ton of sense. The field of accounting, we've had other uh, accounting leaders on in the past, other firms. I'm curious about this. Accounting has changed in what ways, and say in the past 10 to 15 years, the most dramatic ways? 
Well, technology is changing it. Um, innovation is is uh, coming and changing it. Um, clients want us to be trusted advisors and not necessarily want us to be compliance people. So we need to know. We need to get to know our clients and understand what they what they need. Preparing a tax return, auditing a financial statement, is just a small part of what we do. Women in leadership. Um, one of the things that uh, we noticed was that you're very supportive of women promoting leadership for them. You're uh, one of the sponsors of the NJ Biz initiative, uh, 50 top women in business. Yes. Why have a special or a, a, you have a unique program promoting women in business at the firm? We do. Um, you know, women's needs are unique. Are they? They are. They are, if you, uh, you read the book Lean In. Yes. All right, you read the book Lean In. Cheryl Sandberg. Cheryl talks about the societal challenges that women have. Um, they talk about the unique issues because in most cases they are the primary caregiver. That's right. I wasn't expected to be the primary caregiver. Neither was I. And it's so, it's just those issues become unique. So you have to form teams so that they can share the uniqueness. And what we try to do is create flexibility within our firm so we can react to the issues women have to be um, um, productive in the workplace as well as take care of what they feel they need to take care of at home. So we try to be flexible. And that kind of comes out of our women leadership It's program. interesting you say this. You're talking to a guy who uh, tries to lead an organization with uh, nine or ten women who run the organization every day um, who are all leaders. And without that flexibility, you can't get this done. Many of whom are moms and have a lot of responsibility. They have great husbands who are involved as well. But that's a lot of responsibility. Without that flexibility, if you say, these are the hours, this is the situation, and that's the way it is, what happens? It just doesn't work they're going to wind up leaving. They have options. What we try to tell women is you tell us what job works for you, which clients you want to work on, what hours you want to work, what tasks you want to do, and, and we'll let you know if it, if it fits. And we will try to design the job around what your needs are. And I tell you, we have like a 99% success rate with, with working that out. Before we let you out of here, uh, this new book I wrote, Lessons in Leadership, I told you about, I, I've been asking leaders this question. The number one leadership, not lesson, but number one leadership challenge you have faced in the top position you've been in over the years is? Wow, that's a tough question. Yeah. The number one leadership challenge that's I right. face day in and day out really is trying to get everyone to row the boat in the same direction, trying to keep everybody motivated every day. I often say I'm nothing more than the head cheerleader for the organization. So I need to get everybody coming to work every day thinking what's best for the firm. And I think overall that's the biggest leadership challenge. Love it. Hey, next time you come in, could you wear your Chuck Taylors? I'd love to. You got it. Appreciate it. Provided you asked me back. Okay, you got it. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks so much. Steve. Stay with us. We're right back right after this.